So the adopted dog, no major issues. She socialized fairly fine when she was with us. There was never any big problems with it. Again, mm-hmm. owner hasn't socialized her outside of the training very much. And, um, you know, she contacted me maybe two weeks ago, something like that, and just said, you know, I've tried to introduce her to a couple of dogs over the last you know month, and it, like, has been 50-50 as far as it went well or it didn't go well. Yeah. She said there has been a couple situations where, like, you know, she, we tried to introduce her to this other dog, and it was just, like, immediately there's a tussle with them. You know, we got to pull them apart from you. You know, it's mm-hmm. just just didn't go very well. Yeah. And then on the flip side, she had, like, a friend stay with her for, like, two days, and she said, you know, for the entire day, the dogs were together all free freaking day long and it went really well (laughs) yeah right so she's like i don't know what i'm doing like i gotta figure out what's going wrong you know we gotta figure out how to socialize her better Mm. right so she came in we did the lesson yesterday um and um again i know this dog so the first thing that i wanted to do is get some information as far as the situations that she she said it didn't go well Mm. right Biggest thing right off the rip, she said, was almost like 85% of the times that it did not go well were all on leash greetings. <laughs> hmm. Right? Now, Suspense. listen, newer dog owner, kind of, like I said, had one dog before, hasn't really had him before. We never really got into socialization a whole lot. I'm yeah. sure we've said, like, hey, don't do on leash greetings, but like, until you're like summertime, we're going around, you know, like mm-hmm. we're in that situation where it's going to happen. Yeah. I guess you kind of don't realize the importance of it. So I, I just decided to kind of create some like or reiterate some of our rules with socialization. Where If you follow these rules under nine out of 10 circumstances, you really are not going to run into issues with socializing your dog. Right. Mm-hmm. The other issue that she had, the only one that was went poorly but was not an on-leash greeting was that dog that was she was with for like a weekend <clears throat> she was together with the dog all day one day the next day they're still together all day but they're in the backyard having like a barbecue or something like that mm-hmm. and her dog is off leash the other dog is on like a tether in the yard there's a bunch of people over the house stimulating they weren't really kind of seeing what was going on and suddenly they turn around and the dogs are getting into a fight with each other and say yeah. you know, they got to separate them yeah right so all of these things as soon as she said that i was like, all right well this is this is not a this dog is an aggressive dog problem this is simply a we need to understand how to structure our socials problem, right? Mm-hmm. So, so I'm going to reiterate kind of my general rules for socialization, right? So first and foremost, how do we make sure socialization goes well? Well, we need to isolate and realize the three things that dogs will generally fight over, right? Food, toys, affection, right? All three are massive resources, all three are massive things dogs will compete over. And I feel like a lot of people understand, oh, dogs will kind of fight over food. Oh, dogs will kind of fight over toys. Sometimes they do a pretty good job of managing those two. Yep. Everybody. And when I say everybody, I mean just about everybody <laughs> does not really realize the impact that affection can have on socialization. It no, is no. arguably the biggest resource to your dogs and on top of that it's one of the most challenging ones to be able to control because you the person that is there to set the rules and set the boundaries and hold the dogs accountable is the one that is turning into the resource in that moment so it's very Mm -hmm. hard for them to see you as both the resource as well as the figure of authority in that moment yeah very very challenging to do so Mm -hmm. when the dogs are together with each other if you could just make sure that there is no food Meaning treats, meaning food bowls, meaning if you're grilling, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of times like food falling off the grill or off of a a dining room table or something like that. Or I would even argue to say like if you're having dinner and sitting at a table and you have two new dogs you're socializing with each other, that's probably a place you want to separate them. Anywhere where there's food involved, Mm -hmm. either take the food and put it away somewhere. Yep. Or don't have the dogs out together. Give them a break during that time. Right? Sure. Toys. Same deal. Everybody thinks the normal toys. Balls, you know, chew toys, stuff toys, all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. But that also includes things the dogs perceive as toys. Sticks in the backyard, mm-hmm. stuff like that, right? Yep. If you are not, you have to either put those things away or if it's something like the dog plays with sticks and stuff in the backyard, if you can't put those away, you have to be able to have a way to clearly tell the dog to not engage with those things in the moment, mm-hmm. which means you have to have some degree of training. on. Yeah. So got to manage the toys. Affection. That's an obvious one. P- 
petting the dogs, talking to the dogs, Mm -hmm. excessive eye contact with the dog, like all of those things. It's better to be safe than sorry and just nix all of those from the social, Mm -hmm. right? If you could eliminate all three of those things, you have probably taken your probability of the the socialization being successful and had it go from like 25% to like 80%. Like it really is that much of a difference just controlling those three things right there alone. 